What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to World of Wargaming. I hope you're all having a great day. For this segment of building your table, we're going to be looking at some tar pits. Now, this is a non-resin pour technique. This is just going to use some kind of simple hobby and craft stuff that you probably have laying around the house. And if you don't have laying it around the house, everything used here is really 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 cheap to acquire today we're going to go through the materials required for this project as well as the process and a little bit of me rambling along the way so if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet and if you haven't hit that notification bell yet go ahead and hit those for me garner the favor of the dice gods and come along as we get in to these tar pits we're going to need some of this which this is this stuff just Elmer's foam board multi pack, like craft store stuff? It's the foam but with the sheet of paper on each side of it. We're gonna need some white PVA glue, Elmer's always is the choice there. Uh, knife, I'm also gonna, we're also gonna use the long box cutter which I'm gonna have to go find and for this one we do need a ruler because we're gonna need to cut some pieces that are the same size we need a brush and as precious as it is we need a little bit of toilet paper also you know paper towel napkin from a fast food restaurant um, any you know, tissue paper like for wrapping gifts any of that will work this is what I have handy so this is what I'm gonna use all right I found my long box cutter and grabbed a pencil we'll also need this so I'm working with an 8x10 sheet and I want to get the most out of this that I can and I need two pieces to make one tar pit so I'm gonna measure this off into five and four so that I get four equally sized pieces out of the rectangle all right, so we got our window pane split up. Now, I had a metal ruler sitting around here somewhere, but who knows where it is. So I'm gonna use this for just a little bit of a straight edge. And we're just gonna cut right along those lines. Don't worry about cutting all the way through this to begin with. This stuff kind of cuts like sheetrock, if you have any experience with that. We're just gonna score it and then pop it and then run our knife right along that crease. And at this point we can just kind of use it to guide and then pop it back the other way and we got our pieces. We're gonna repeat that for the smaller pieces. With our stacks cut, separate those out so I'm gonna make three of these we'll save that other piece of board for another project later want to make sure they more or less match up and we're on the top of each of them just gonna draw out kind of a random shape don't see right there I probably got too close to the edge right there you don't want to go too terribly close to the very very edge of it because we're still gonna need some room out there to shape it out so that we can put a little bit of a slope to it so that it's not just boom straight flat manufactured look inside we want it to look you know as natural as we can make a tiny tar pit for playing with toy soldiers look but don't think too much about this shape is the big thing like don't get too caught up in oh my goodness it's good you know it's a tar pit it can be any shape you could, I mean, technically you can make it look like Kirby if you wanted to, but I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's not a big deal what that shape looks like. So don't stress yourself out too badly over it. With those three shapes cut, we're going to take the regular hobby knife 
and cut those out. Only of the top piece. We're not going to do anything to the bottom pieces yet. Those are our bases. We want to keep them whole and intact. When you cut these shapes out, I find that it works best if instead of trying to go all the way through the sheet at once, just go around the edges, give it a nice score. You want to get, you know, maybe a quarter of the way through it to a halfway through it. Don't try to press all the way through. Just get around and again, you know, if you don't cut right on the line you drew, whatever, it doesn't matter because we're going to paint over the whole thing anyways. You don't even have to go back and erase the line. Just, just don't worry about it, man. It's going to be cool. So with a deep score on there, then we want to just kind of pick it up and go in and saw it out. With all of our pieces cut out, we're almost ready to move on to the next step. But before we do that, we want to shape this inner edge just a little bit. Nothing dramatic or intense, just so that it doesn't, you know, just look like a cut out piece of foam board. We'll hide some of the, you know, minor flaws later. But for this, we just want to take that long bladed box cutter and just run that on a 45 around the edge. We have to do this now because once we glue the top and the bottom together, we're not really gonna be able to get at this the way we want to. But don't have to be neat or clean or you know worry about the perfection of it. Because again, as I've probably said before, we're not, you know, we're emulating a semi-natural thing and there are almost limitless variations within nature. But just a quick, 45 around the outside to give it a little bit of that going down into the pit, you know, a little bit of a bank. Now, for this next step, you can absolutely do this with Elmer's glue. You're gonna need to wait a bit longer for it to cure, and you're gonna need to be a little bit more gentle with the next step. I, however, am in a little bit of a hurry, and I don't wanna have to worry about being super gentle, so I'm gonna use super glue. And all we're gonna do is flip it over, Take our glue, get a good layer going, you know, a good bead. Don't worry if you go outside the edges. And then we're just going to take one of the flat pieces that are currently unaltered, line it up, press it down. Super basic. It may drip out a little bit on the sides. So maybe leave it sitting on a piece of wax paper or some tin foil, something along those lines where it's not gonna get messed up. Once these are all glued together, I like to stack them up and put some weight on them. So I'm gonna start with this dice tray to kind of evenly distribute. Then I'm gonna put the biggest, heaviest book that I own on it, which is the Warhammer 40K. I think this is the sixth edition rule book, but this thing's a monster. We're gonna let that sit on there for probably about an hour just to make sure that it's good and dry and cured into those two. Okay, so we've, I've given this a little bit, probably longer than an hour. I've probably given this a couple of hours at this point. So we're gonna pick these weights up, see what we got. Now there is likely to be some small gap in this part where they join. That's okay because we're gonna be covering this with both primer and a layer of just acrylic paint to kind of lock everything down. But our next step before we do any of that is going to be to take our long blade and we just want to draw it all the way around and shape up that outer edge a little bit so that it doesn't just look like such a, you know, rectangle. So all the shaping up done. So the goal there again is to just kind of get it to where it'll taper down to the table level. That's why we needed to go two layers up so that we can make a depression to put our tar for this situation. But again, if this could be a pool of water, a lava pit, it can be whatever you need it to be with the technique. So next move is going to be to prime everything black in this case again you use whatever color you'd like 
And then I'm also going to go over that with just some standard acrylic black paint over the whole thing uh, to kind of put a, a lock and seal on everything. And also because with spray paint over any kind of foam, you're always going to get a little bit of that foam that kind of peeks through. So just to double ensure that it is completely covered and totally sealed before moving on to the next step. With those layers of paint on our pieces, we're at, a, we're at the finishing stage, or the last finishing stage before we do the, the tar inside the pits. And with this, there are several options. You could very easily just take this with a, in my case, it would be a gray, and then maybe a lighter gray. If you did it with brown, it would be with lighter shades of brown. But you could absolutely dry brush and just step up the highlights with the dry brush and finish it off as a rocky texture. You could cover it with sand flock and paint it up and do it that way. Or you can do what I'm going to do, which is to cover it with Citadel Technical. The, uh, this is the Agrelin Badlands. Um, I will, since it's black, I'll paint it up. It'll crack. I'll see some black showing through. I'll wash over that with probably an Agrax Earthshade and then be ready to make some tar. So lesson learned, apparently Agrelin Badlands and Agrelin Earth are not the same thing. Uh, the Badlands is a texture paint, the other is a crackle paint. But I had a little bit of the, the Earth, the crackle paint left, so I used that to finish out these two while this one has the uh, Agrelin Badlands, which again is just kind of like basically dirt mixed into the paint but this is dried i've put a wash of agrax earth shade on it and we're ready to get into the tar pits to do that we're going to need something to mix in and i've got oh um, about an ounce of water in this but with this process you, you got to measure this stuff with your heart you just i, I cannot give you precise directions we got to measure with our heart a little bit so first thing into the cup is going to be some of that elmer's white glue just kind of funnel cake it up next we're going to go in with some black regular acrylic paint like you would use for canvas or doing a terrain project or something like that and then a little bit of flow aid this is what we use I honestly don't know what it's actually for. I've only ever used it for doing stuff like this and for doing, see, helping to seal terrain bits. Um, and you want it to be just a little bit thicker than soup. That's why we have the uh, acrylic paint in there to color it, but also to build up the body of it a little bit. And I think... I want a little bit more glue in that. It's okay if you mix up too much. Um, you can put a, if you have a container with a lid, you can lid this up and it'll keep for a while if you want to save it for another project. Um, you could definitely use this to seal down uh, sand flock or anything like that. You know, let it dry, paint it over, let it lock down, and then you can dry brush or do whatever on top of it. I think that's going to be good. We're going to start the process by brushing on a liberal layer of our paint glue flow aid mixture. Um, it doesn't really, that's why I wanted to do the bases first. That way, if I went over the line of where I wanted dirt to be, I could very easily just cover it up in this step as opposed to doing the tar first and then having to actually be careful about what I was doing with the banks. Just, this is for me, the preferable method. Get a good layer of that on. Then we're gonna take our paper material and just start laying it in. Let it fold and ripple and do its thing. Don't worry about pressing it all the way down into the mixture. For now, we just wanna get it covered. Word to the wise, 
If you use toilet paper or a napkin or anything that is two-ply, separate the pieces. Otherwise, they won't go down quite right. So with, with it covered, our next play is going to be to just carefully cover it up with our mixture. And as, it, as you're loading it up, you know, you can scoot it around a little bit. Move it around. Doesn't matter if it if it's big thing is if you have any kind of printed pattern on the paper that you're using, you want to make sure you ruffle everything around enough and fold it and bunch it and crunch it and tear it enough that that's not going to show up in the finished product. Which we're we're our goal here is to load this down and super super saturate it. If we see a little bit of our mixture floating on top, that is outstanding. That is just fine. Let it. Okay, we have all three of our tar pits filled. We're going to set those to the side to dry for a little bit, and we're going to try to make some bubbles. Now, with this, it's kind of hit or miss. So I always do more than I think I'm going to need. Uh, this has nothing to do with the project. This is just putting something down so that I can move them around as I need. The wax paper, however, the wax paper we need. So we're going to take our wax paper. I'm going to be using these glass beads. However, anything you have that's, you know, roundish will work. If you wanted really big bubbles, you could use like halves of the Easter egg things. Uh, you know, the plastic Easter eggs. We're just going to lay these out. And then I'm going to take a lot of glue. Here is the step that I forgot. We want to tape the little beads down to the paper. Now, with everything taped down and secured, we're going to take our mixture of heavy glue and a little bit of that other pigment glue mixture and just coat these things up thick with it. With those covered, we're just going to walk away, let this sit. I missed a spot right there. Let me fix that now. Uh, a couple of tips, things to be aware of when you do this. This is not going to be a single coat operation. I'm going to do at least two coats, maybe three, depending on how it looks. Um, and understand that when we get to the end step, we're hoping to get one or two usable bubbles out of this, maybe three. Uh, this is a, can be a slightly frustrating process at times, but it can work. You just kind of got to over-prepare for it. Now, when I'm painting on the glue mixture, I'm not going all the way around the surface. I'm going right to where it starts to curve and then stopping, and I'm doing my best to build up the glue mixture at that bottom edge. I want it to be thick around that bottom rim because that will make it a little bit easier to peel it off. Um, and so we'll let these dry for an hour or so and come back, put another coat on them. And then I'll let that dry for an hour or so. And then I'll try to peel one. If I can get one to come off, then I will know that I can probably get the rest to come off and we'll see what we end up with. That is usable. So those bubbles are finally dry and I've got a failed one right here to show you why we do way more than we need because sometimes they just tear and won't let go. Now looking back, uh, you can put a little bit of Vaseline on top of your, your bead service and that will help it release a little bit better. That's something I just forgot to do. So what I'm trying to do here with this one is just show you, kind of show you how to get it off. You just kind of want to go around the edges and pry it up try to pry that edge up a little bit and this is why I said I want to make the edges a little bit thicker uh, because then during this process you're more likely to get it to come loose as a single piece instead of just tearing and fraying all over the place oh there we go and then we'll let's see right there we got it hung a little bit but that might make a decent one yeah Okay.
Okay. Yeah. I didn't expect that I was going to get to use that one. Or keep that one. But yeah, that's a usable bubble. Now what we want to do for this next step to get the bubbles on is we're going to take the leftovers from when we did the pit and a little bit more of that tissue paper, napkin, toilet paper, whatever it is that you happen to be using. Put this towel down as I dripped and dropped and got a stain on one of my favorite play mats the other day so I'm going to try to be a little bit more careful. I want to put a little bit of this down. Be gentle. The, uh, even though this under layer is dry, we still just want to be careful with it. No sense in being rough and potentially messing up, you know, finished work. So then we're going to take one of our bubbles, set it down in there, take our mixture. And this also be very, very careful here because these bubbles are very thin. There's not a lot to them. I got away with only doing one coat on this. So be gentle. You're going to want to avoid stacking these up when we're done. Okay. Set our brush down. Take our paper. And just lay it around again just like before don't worry if it doesn't you know if it's you got pieces coming way out here we'll come over the whole thing with some of that glue and paint mixture but this is just to cement the bubble in and to integrate it with the rest of the feature so that it looks more like it's coming up out all right so while that tissue dries, and you're going to get some malformed bubbles, it's just, it's going to happen. They're, unless you layer up that glue really thick, they're not going to stay perfect. And that's, you know, again, that's okay. It's tar. We want it to look kind of gross and imposing and nasty. While that is drying in the tar pit area, I'm going to come around on my edges here and just hit that with a quick dry brush of probably a scrag brown mixed with a little bit of Rackarth flesh to tint it up quite you know up tinted up a fair amount to where i can get a, a good little bit of contrast on that and then we'll be ready to seal it with our first layer of sealant and then probably drop a few little tufts on it and put that gloss coat on the tar itself oh and and let me not forget this this step once all of this is really good and dry it's going to get a dry brush of a very light gray like spaceship exterior from the army painter and then just a very super super light dry brush of, of, of pure white on top of that okay and here we are with all of those steps done i dry brushed like i said with the spaceship exterior and just a little bit of white i've got just a little bit of the ard coat here that is still working dry but you see how that's nice got a nice little bit of a shine to it nice little bit of a wet shine to it that's from the ard coat which is just a gloss enamel kind of clear coat. Any Anyone will do. Um, we got some tufts on our ponds, on our ponds, our tar pits. Bubbles are locked in place. I'm pretty happy with how those turns out. You know, obviously it's not the only way to go about doing it, but it is a way to go about doing it. But that's going to... That's going to finish us up here, folks. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for listening to me. I know I tend to ramble sometimes, but thank you for sticking out. I hope, I really, really, really hope that you are able to make use of this while building your table and your environment and building your immersion for this amazing hobby that we all share. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see y'all next time. That does it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in to World of Wargaming. If you've enjoyed the content that you saw today, consider hitting that like button for me. If you want to see more content like what you saw today, consider hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell for notifications so that you get alerts whenever I post new content. And if you liked what you saw so much that you would like to contribute to the continuation of it, 
then check out the description below. You'll find a link to the Patreon account for the studio. Um, and there are numerous tiers there structured for however little or however much you would like to help out. And I want you to know that regardless of any of those things, if you do any of those things or don't do any of those things, I'm incredibly grateful that you stopped by and hung out today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I hope that the dice are ever in your favor.